Viper Sniper says, so I want to build a long range quad and you, sir, have so much content about a quad build. And for a newbie, where should I start with a frame and so on? Uh, my official and Viper Sniper, this is not the answer you want to hear, but my official answer is that beginners should not build long range quads. And I don't want to sound like a gatekeeping boomer asshole. Okay. Like. I definitely have a lot of respect for people who say, I want to do this thing. I don't know anything about it. I'm going to dive in head first into the deep end, sink or swim. I think that a lot of really great life experiences come from having that attitude. But the problem, the problem is with long range. What's the definition of long range? Long range is the, de my definition of long range is when you crash, you can't just walk and pick it up and get it again. So by definition, long range means that the consequence of a mistake is you are highly likely to lose the whole aircraft. And especially if you're flying long range over populated areas, the consequences that you, which you like, I'm not, don't do it. If you're flying long range over populated areas, which you shouldn't do, but some people do it, you can then you're going to crash. You're going to land on somebody. Potentially, you'll hit a person. Worst case scenario, you'll hit a car. Who knows, right? You just don't know. And the thing is that learning to fly FPV inherently involves putting yourself in situations where, oh, shit, you lost video. Oh, shit, you fail safe. And that's how you learn to recognize when you're going to fail safe and when you're going to lose video and oh my god my prop wasn't tight you need to have all these experiences where you make all these mistakes that no one can teach you or prepare you for you have to make these mistakes and when you make the mistake you want your quad to crash into the ground somewhere 200 300 meters away and where you walk or you get on your one wheel and you go and you pick it up and you go, what the hell happened there? I have no idea. I just lost video and my quad crashed. And then you figure it out and you learn. And after you have that experience, that's when you're actually prepared to do long range. Because, because the, and then long range presents all these additional ways that you could lose your quad. But the first thing you need to do is you need to learn the basic 101 stupid things, that's mistakes that you'll make that cause your quad to crash and you to lose it. And you don't want to do that with your very first beginner quad where you go your long range and you'll crash it and you'll lose it forever. So as a newbie, start with a three inch, start with a, a tiny whoop, start with a five inch, but don't start with a seven inch if you really want to. Like, I think that's probably not the best use of your money, but but don't fly it long range. Don't fly it any further. Whenever you fly it, ask yourself, if I crash right now into the ground, can I just go pick it up? And if the answer is no, it'll be gone forever. Don't fly there. Fly closer to yourself until you start to get that experience. Um, I think that realistically, a person should have as much as maybe a year of flying before they start thinking about long range. I pulled that number out of my butt. There's certainly people who would be super, super competent after six months and be able to sort of tackle it. But definitely a long range bird should not be your first bird. Not an FPV drone. Like if you said I bought a DJI Mavic and I'm gonna go fly it five kilometers away, like I still don't think that's like a good idea. But DJI has like got so many safeguards. The worst thing that's likely to happen is that it just comes and flies home again. But FPV drones don't do that. And the other thing is, the other thing is, and again, I don't want to sound super gatekeepery, and I don't want to belabor this point. But uh, by the time you get to where you're good enough, like with a five inch, where you're comfortable and you kind of got your feet under you, you would phrase that question differently. You would be like, which seven inch frame should I get for my long range build? And I would suss that you already knew enough about long range that you decided you needed a seven inch. Whereas when you come to me and say, where should I start for my long range build? I just don't know. It's like, okay, okay, no, 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 no. You're not ready. KCFPV asks, my Tango 2 is showing its age. Any recommendation on a game style controller? So the two that I would point you towards are 
if you decide you want to get into the Radio Master ecosystem, the Radio Master Zorro is somewhat similar to the Tango in terms of its ergonomics. Not not a lot, but um, and um, you put a crossfire module on the back of it, you're all good. Uh, the, the short battery life is the really big weakness of the Zorro. It uses 13 650 batteries or 1350 or whatever batteries. It uses really small batteries and the battery life can be as little as a couple hours if you're at high power, high, high output power. It has a plug for an external battery input, but not everybody's happy with that solution. So that's the real weakness of the Radio Master Zorro is its short battery life, but it might work for you. The other one I think is really worth a look is the Jumper T20. And it actually more closely approximates the ergonomics of the Tango. The Jumper T20, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't ever, don't ever start playing music when I open a web page. Never do that. Never. Never do that. That's so uncalled for. <sighs> The ergonomics uh, of the T20, like in terms of it's, it's it's similar to the Tango in that it's kind of wide and flat. You have full sized gimbals. You have the same tiny screen that you're used to and you have a shitload more buttons and switches and stuff. The T20 is really impressive. Um, the build quality from Jumper is not going to be on par with with Crossfire or tank with with TBS or Radio Master. Like, and I say that because I've opened them up and like the Radio Master switches, the wires coming off the switch are like nicely epoxied to kind of keep them from breaking. And the jumper ones are just kind of soldered and the solder's maybe a little not quite that great. Um, so the build quality is not gonna be what you might want, but this is a really unique uh, slot in terms of its capabilities and its ergonomics that I think are going to appeal to a lot of people. And specifically, people coming from the Tango, I think, are going to find this radio appealing. In addition, you can... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I don't know if there's anything about this. You can... Wait a minute. Is my T20 a 4-in-1? Oh, I might have the 4-in-1 module. I might own a 4-in-1 radio after all. Yay. You can actually put Crossfire inside the radio. I don't see I don't see the video for that. They have a mod where you put a Crossfire, uh, you decase a Crossfire module and put it inside the radio, which coming from the Tango is going to really appeal. So that's the direction I would uh, steer you.